Let's see, let me open it up here. And pause. All right, I'm going to pause it so I can answer every question. I'm going to try to deal with one question at a time. Gloria, I'm going to need you to help me here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, this first question is, uh, brothers, I would like to request to, to study to be able to help brothers in Delaware, PA, New Jersey area where there is currently none. Okay, well, philosopher, first one, thank you for your question. Uh, if you want to help the brothers in those surrounding areas, I mean, that's what Christ called you to do. He want to help you with that. Please get with Elder and Brother Gabar. Okay? He's on here now. Gabar144, I think he's on here. Send a private message to him. He's in the class. And he'll definitely get back with you so that we can help you with this work you would like to do. All right. All right. We thank you, too. For those that are thanking us, we thank you. And above all, thank the Most High. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what's that right here? Uh, it states, it's so refreshing to hear this from uh, Hucky55. Uh, it is so refreshing to hear Israelites speaking well of each other. This is love of Ahia, that we love one another. Thank you for looking forward, uh, looking forward to Wednesday. Exactly. That's what it's about. Regardless of, listen, we're going to have people attack us. We're going to have people call us the devil, demons, or whatever the case is. Like we, like we brought out in St. John 15 and 18. That is to be expected. They, they, they called Christ worse. But see, if you have any discernment, anyone that's attacking their brother, right, that tells you straight out that they are a tear. T-A-R-E. They go in a tear category. Just keep going. All right? Because if someone is afflicted with a devil or a demon or whatever the case is, do you ridicule them? Do you hurt them or if they're sick or do you try to heal them? If you're in Christ, shouldn't you have the power to help someone with the de devil or demon? Or you just want to just demean them and try to destroy them? So that's just a point. Thank you for what you, what you brought forth. It's about love. It's about loving your brother and not, not hating your brother. So that's a key point. Someone... Right, Mrs. Judah, I think. Oh, this is Ms. Mrs. No, Judah. No, I think right here. Uh, uh, campaign for Truth. Campaign for Truth. Uh, states, do you think we're living in Revelations? When someone asks, do you think we're living in Revelations, which is a good question, you have to realize Revelations really embodies the whole Bible. Revelations, so... If you say we're living in Revelations, then it would have you think that there's time periods for each chapter in Revelations. It's just the end. When there's precepts that I can go to in Isaiah and Jeremiah that talks about the same end as Revelations. There's places I can go in Ezekiel that talks about the same gates and beasts that's in Revelations. Revelations is at the end because it was one of the last given by that was penned by John who was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. So Revelations is really not uh, a time period in which we will live during the end like it's portrayed. Revelations precepts from the beginning when the fallen angels happen, when you go to Revelations 12, it talks about Lucifer's fall. So it really is an embodiment of the whole Bible, Revelations. Okay, and, and so... When, when someone asks us, what are we living in? We're living in the prophecies of the whole Bible, not just Revelations. Okay? I can teach the same things in Revelations. We can, and you can also. 
by just going through the whole book even before Revelations. Mm -hmm. Some of the same prophecies are, are there. So that is a good question. No, we're not living in Revelations, but Revelations is, I would say, a more condensed version to understand the prophecies of the end times, opposed to going through all the precepts uh, in the Bible itself. All right, what's the next question? Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Judah, 1949. I've always wondered what Matthew 25 and 13 meant. I knew a lot what it meant, but this lesson today gave me a complete understanding mostly about the Talmuds. I praise the Most High for you all. Well, we thank you and, and we praise the Most High and we, and, and for the understanding and thank the Most High that, that you are able to discern and receive the knowledge in the scriptures. That was that same voice that called you from the beginning. Build on it. Right? What's the next one here? Uh, this is Mrs. Yearn to Learn. Uh, Elder Recall. Uh, Abraham begot Ishmael, Isaac, and other nations. Who are the other nations? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, through Abraham's seed, he got... You, you have, you have uh, Ishmael. You have... You have Isaac. Okay, you also have people that, that lives like uh, the seeds of, were really in the same family. When you look at Ammon, when you look at Lot, these are all from the same bloodlines. Okay, then you have other Middle Eastern families on the outside, like Syria uh, and, and, and those areas, Lebanon today, they're all from seeds. Of, of Abraham which are not actually Ishmael okay so what I would like to do is I'm gonna to put together a chart a family chart from Abraham down or the fathers and show root a root graph to show you each families I started working on something but I have to get back into it and just give you a graph that we can put on the site and just show you the families of the earth today because they're still intact which are from the seeds of Abraham outside of Ishmael. That's a good question. I'm going to make sure we get that. Uh, Abraham family table. Got to write reminders for myself. All right, what's next? Uh, someone says, what makes one a brother or a sister? Only ones that keep the commands. Well, That, that, is, that is a good point, but the whole deal is I, I don't think any of us in a position to say what a brother or sister is. That's something that's prove, proven within that particular person. Mm -hmm. um, and I let the Most High discern that. You understand? I see some people say, well, I'm not going to deal with this person because, or I, some, some people out there all together and say that, if you're not an Israelite, you're not my brother or sister and all that without having a, a family table of anybody and don't know who, who, who is who. You understand? So I can't make that discernment personally. It's up to that person to show themselves approved and be a brother or sister. And the Most High will decide that. Okay. And they are those that keep the commandments of the Most High. But I'm not in everyone's house and everyone home and I can't discern that. I can't, you understand? It's up to the individual to show out there to be a brother or a sister. All right? Uh, let's get here. Uh, someone says, very good lesson and right on time for the times we are living. Uh, the lesson two weeks ago, it was said that the seventh day of Venice eat pork, etc. I grew up uh, Seven Day Adventist and that is incorrect. Okay. Well, you mean the lesson you gave? Uh, um, well, I've been touching it. Okay, well, if we, if, if we said that, I don't know. If we did say that, then I can stand corrected if, if I mentioned that the Seven Day Adventists eat pork. I know that a lot of Seven Day Adventists I've, I've ran into are very health conscious hmm. and they do eat vegetarian foods and things of that nature so all right 
if that's the case, if that was said, I stand corrected. Um, I, I, I cannot say for sure. I know all the ins and outs of the dietary uh, habits of the Seventh-day Adventists. I know the, what the Most High say, to eat and not to eat. All right. What's next? Right here. Uh, someone says, is Christ uh, Michael the Archangel? Christ is not Michael the Archangel. He's not. I know that's something that's being taught. It was taught amongst the Seventh-day Adventists, and is the root lesson of that, that root lesson came from Charles Taze Russell. The uh, he's really the he created the he, he's the originator of what we call today the Jehovah Witnesses. But no, Michael is not uh, Christ. And see, and that's why it says. Uh, it, it tells us that we cannot be deceived into worshiping of angels, voluntary humility in Hebrews, and tricked into worshiping angels. And that whole concept, putting Michael and angel on the level of Christ, is that. It embodies that in itself. All right. Michael is not Christ. And you can prove that by actually going to the book of Jude. Let's go to the book of Jude real quick. Uh, this is the book of Jude, verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. He disputed about the body of Moses. Read. There is not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So if Michael was Christ, then he would have been able to rebuke the devil when they were contending over Moses' body. But he couldn't. He says, Christ, the Lord will rebuke thee, proving to you that Michael is not Christ. So just go directly to Jew that handles all that. Some people through a private message are sending me something about someone is some brother has put up a video of me shape shifting or, or something. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's like. Yeah, but it's OK. That, that's a perfect example of what we were talking about, brothers and sisters, okay? And it goes back to, and I'm going to say this again. I don't know why you, you, you brothers and sisters, even give this, this, this person, you know, view time. Just leave him alone. He's, he want attention. Leave him alone. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean... Something got to be seriously wrong with a person. I mean, straight up that have so much obsession with another man. Hmm. And, uh, hey, I don't, hey, <laughs> if someone is obsessed to the point where they're watching me for hours and slowing me down, while I'm teaching. If you believe that what we're teaching is not true, why even have a video of us? Mm -hmm. Why even look at us? Why even know that, why even care if we exist if we're wrong? So he's doing it because of the stuff you all are sending to me. It's giving him some attention. So it's up to you. All right. If you want to continue to, you know, don't even argue with the God. Another thing is don't even go, don't even view his stuff. Don't even go and, 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 and try to contend. And I'm going to say this. You don't have to defend any of us. Mm -hmm. This is Christ said that if they did it to him, they're going to do it to us. So you don't even got to try to defend us. Let him do what he, let them do what they do. Lord. Lawyer, you know, I hope I don't, you know, shape shift in front of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that's know, right? that's going. <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Hmm. I mean, what ridiculousness! I mean, it's, it's utterly ridiculous, brothers and sisters. Don't. Uh, what? Let's answer some questions here. Hmm. <laughs> if I can just add something real quick. Go ahead. Well, Maybe this can help the newer uh, brothers yeah. and sisters. 
it's easy to figure out those who are really for the brethren and those who are truly for Christ. Uh, if you have an example of somebody who decides to first learn and then spread out or do what they're going to do, if you see a situation in which there's no growth, they don't, they're not starting any ministries, they're not doing anything to build people, and you know it's not really for the brethren, it's not of the truth. If anyone is really down for the truth and for the building of the nation of Israel, they will go out, they will get a building, start teaching people in the church, set up websites, do all the different things that it takes in order to sustain the people. But, as you can see, people are wasting their time, they're doing, wasting all their energy that they could be using to build people to instead tear it down. So that's just one of the things that you can really uh, use to notify those that are truly for the building of the nation of Israel. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else we have here? And that's another thing. I know a lot of you, this particular brother, I think it was on our radio show and all that, and started going off, you understand, into some stuff. And then one day, I think, Elder Lawyer, while I was off, you corrected this brother with something. Hmm. And I think he just went on a tangent from that point going forward. And I think a lot of you were subscribed to this brother because he was on the radio show and was a guest in certain areas. And, you know, and y'all subscribed to the guy. So some of you can't avoid the videos because you subscribed to him when you thought he was part of the church. That brother is not a part of the church. So just unsubscribe from him. And then when he put up a video... It won't show up on your thing. So unsubscribe from the brother. So anybody else with the church that just unsubscribe from this guy. <laughs> you understand? Because I mean, he just wanted obviously what's going on with him was his true intent. And let's go back to first John two, because that show you he was never with us. He was just looking for some notoriety, someone's head to stand on to get recognized. Uh, verse uh, first John chapter 2 verse 18, 18 through 19 read little children it is the last time that you have heard that Antichrist shall come even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time read they went out from us they went out from us but they were not of us he was never of us for if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us. Exactly. And at one time, over a year ago, we had to send out a correction where the brother tried to, was, was trying to go against Pastor Dow. Over a year ago, he was trying to attack Pastor Dow, the brother over there doing his work over there in the United States. And I had to humbly come to the brother and say, you can't attack that brother. That brother is a minister of the Most High, whether you agree with him or not. Trying to attack, and then the then brother Pastor Dow, because Pastor Dow was subscribed to us when I was in the states. He was to listen to us all the time. He was sending me letters like, "What's going on with these people from Gathering of Christ Church?" That's attacking me and whatever. And I found out it was the same brother. So I should have known back then that he would eventually try to attack me. <laughs> Don't make no sense. All right, what's next? Okay, keep on going here. Let's see. Uh, the next one. Uh, can you explain Revelations 1.16 when it says, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword? Well, you can precept that two ways. Let's get, uh, wait, tell you, it cuts between bone and marrow. Yeah.
Oh, this is the book of uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. Yes, it. For the word of the Most High is quick. For the word of the Most High is quick. And powerful. And powerful. Because you know the word is also who? Christ. In the beginning was the word. The word was the most, the word was with the Most High. The word was a power. So he was there from the beginning. So the, it's the word which is Christ. Read. Is quick. Is quick and powerful, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It it actually cuts through soul and spirit, and that's that also that spirit that revealed the truth. It cut through everything to show you the power of this book, which is a spirit. There's a spirit in this book, which is Yeshua. Read and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's how powerful he is. So that sword also breaks down the Bible because through the Bible, the Bible does the same. So that's one, that's, on, that's in the spiritual sense of how you can use the Bible to cut through everything. To know someone's true intent. But then there's a physical sword it links up in to when you go to Revelations. Let's get it real quick. It talks about that sword, Revelations. Uh, Revelations chapter 19. I'll start at 20. verse. Go ahead. I'll uh, start at Revelations 19, uh, verse. 13. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Lord. Christ was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Read. And his name is called the Word of the Most High. The Word of the Most High. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. So he will smite the nations when he returns with this sharp sword. So you can, you can link it up either way. In the spirit of the Bible, which is Christ, and physically when he comes. You can use those precepts. All right. There was an earthquake in Georgia last night. And I was speaking to some people, some people the other day of how they use the entertainment field to make Georgia a mecca in which all of our people would flock to at the very end of the fall of Babylon. Mm -hmm. It became the black capital. And the next thing you know, it became one of the sodomite capitals for black people within the United States. The CDC is there. They're doing tests. Snow there. It's snow of biblical proportions. They're just they're living through it now. Some type of bio organic stuff they're sheeting the whole United States with. They're fracking there. They have a dome through FEMA, FEMA dome there. So I know that what some of the major, what you would call depopulation agenda agendas within the United States will happen in that key location. Uh, they're looking to get us out of the way in California through droughts and the destruction of certain areas that actually looks to survive uh, off, of, off, off of aqueducts and waters that are pumped into certain areas. So that if you're living in a desert, you got to get out of the deserts. Georgia is not a good place. But through the spirit of the Most High, you're protected if you have that hedge, but still know that there's better geographical locations outside of these uh, FEMA hubs. And that's all I'm going to say there. Let me see here. Uh, let's answer this question right here. Go ahead. If someone says, good breakdown of the tears and weep. I asked the question, why is there there's no dis dissension between brothers who know their Israel in all the different camps? I asked the question, why is there so much dissension between brothers who know their Israel in all the different camps? Now, I hope this lesson answered your question. There were dissension through all the Jews and the brethren when Christ was on this earth. That's just the way it is. And the dissension is not because brothers uh, 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 
don't want to love each other. That's not the point. It's the doctrine of Christ that actually puts those in Christ at variance against those who are against them. That's just the way it is. It's the doctrine. Okay? If it tell you that Christ is like a sword that's going to pit mother against child and father against son, and that's in your own household, you know there's going to be divisions against those who are Hebrews. So us being Israelites is not the ties that bond. Okay? It's not. That's just the origin of our seed. But the, like I tell you in Romans, those of Israel are not all Israel. Just because you are from the bloodline of Abraham doesn't mean you're son. You must be in Christ to be under the doctrine. And that's what a real Hebrew is. That's what a real Israelite is. Okay. So they'll never be a coming together. It, because if we came together before Christ came, then what, what's the prophecy of him gathering those that belong to him at the end? Okay? So Christ calls that divide. Okay? So I understand that we want some a, a rainbow coalition of, of, of Israelites when we first learn the truth because it's so sweet. But the, re, the reality is, there's just as much division amongst Israel than it is in any other thing you're, you, you could have been following. And it's the truth of Christ and there's everything else. All right, what else here? Right here. If you're still somewhat a babe in the word, should you still try to show people things about the word, like family or friends, etc.? The answer is yes, but just stick with what you absolutely understand and don't go outside of that scope. And, and be humble enough to admit if there's something that's brought up to you that you don't understand that you haven't learned it yet. You don't understand that yet. But with this foundation that I have, it's enough to keep me until I learn that. So make sure you always stay within the scope of what you have perfected while you've been learning up until this point. No matter what that little tidbit is, make that your full scope and never go outside of that until you learn more. So the answer is, if you have, if you're confident in what you've learned up until this point and understand it and can teach it to yourself, yes, that show to others. And always apply that no matter how much knowledge you receive. Always use that same uh, uh, platform to go from. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's, the, what's next here? Uh, I have a question. It says, uh, I have a question concerning what happens to the spirit after it leaves the body. Where you at? Uh, Dodge to walk. Go here. Okay, uh, brown table. Uh, concerning the dissension, when the doctrine is shown and proven to be incorrect, why do the camp leaders refuse or are afraid to admit uh, we're wrong and deal with correction? They're wrong and deal with correction. Well, didn't, we just read earlier in the lesson in Matthews that it was given unto you to understand and to them it was not given. That's almost like, and that's exactly like in the physical, trying to get upset with a blind guy because he can't see it. He was born blind. If they've been spiritually blinded, it doesn't matter what you show them. They will see nothing until the light is shown to them by Christ. And then 
they'll come on one accord with what you're saying. So you, there's spiritual blindness too. So that's why their eyes are blinded. They, their eyes are blinded and their ears are dull of hearing. So there's, there's so many people that will just rejoice with what you're bringing. Why try to kick a brick wall? Just pray for them and be more fruitful with that talent that was given to you so that you can bear some seed. Kodash uh, Tawab, Shalom, I have a question concerning what happens to the spirit after it leaves the body. I was told the body lingers for seven days, then descended to Abraham bosom or in hell. There's a lesson we have on that. Uh, the title of it, I think it's up on Judah's Backs page. The title of it is speaking of uh, what happens uh, after the spirit leaves. It's, it's on its page, so it could be on our page too. But it's in the 70 scriptures in Ezra's that was lost that shows what happens during that seven day period. And that's why the Jewish people today have a ritual for the seven days knowing that the spirit is traveling before its final habitation uh, I'll touch on that in a future lesson, but until then you would need to actually uh, Get that video on on hell on what happens uh, and, and the teachings of hell that we have taught and you can get that through YouTube What's next? Someone says, how does one understand what their gift is and how to utilize that gift to do work for the most high? The gift is whatever you're good at. Tell you in the park, the work of your hands is what the most high gave you to get through this earth. All right. So whatever you're good at is that talent. OK, now you've got to hone that talent to now use it for the truth. All right. With that, I'm a little over the time. I want you all to prepare uh, for the class that Elder Gabar has coming. Soon we will have the Purim. We're going to talk about that for the Feast of Purim, which is really the giving of gifts day if you want to give gifts. And we'll talk about that next week. Uh, also, we got the Passover coming over all coming out all through the, throughout the earth. The Passover will be here soon. And uh, we'll talk about that next week also, the truth of the Passover, how it falls uh, in scriptures and what day of year it is this year, the day then talk about us coming together for this Passover all around the earth, all right? In remembrance of Christ. With that, I'm going to say shalom. We love you. Stay strong. And uh, stay in the spirit, brothers and sisters. We'll soon see Zion. Shalom. Shalom. Be encouraged. Stay strong.